Hey, hey, happy day. So I've decided I'd do a reading every Monday to uh, kind of set the tone for the week, what we can expect perhaps <clears throat> uh, in the days going forward into the week. And uh, so let's crack on. Uh, today, I believe, is the 18th of January, 2021. And the first card that came up in our reading is the Ace of Swords in reverse. Swords are our thoughts, um, you know, things in our mind, um, ideas. And Ace always trumps. It's the top. So normally if you get it in... Uh, that position kind of means a really good idea or an epiphany or something like that. So this card came up, like I said, in the past, and it's in reverse. So perhaps something that we thought was a good idea in the past uh, didn't pan out, and uh, perhaps a project that we um, had undertaken um, perhaps... Um, more inclined to think it's a work thing, perhaps even a relationship um, or where we're living. Um, certainly the state of current affairs have highlighted that what we thought perhaps was a good idea once uh, turns out that it is actually not such a good idea. And uh, the judgment card I talked about this at the beginning of, or oh, at the end of last year, kind of November time, it uh, keeps, it's been in my frame of reference many times for a few reasons. One, it's number 20, and we are, uh, we had 2020 last year, we are in the 2020s, um, and it's also the crux, um, and there is the cross of the Heros Gamos, the divine <coughs> union of the, excuse me, masculine and feminine, both within and without, <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, we, as we see in the Crystal Alley card, um, it's about evolution. And so uh, last week, I know in the reading, I talked about resurrection. So perhaps there are aspects of ourselves that were laid to rest that we now need to resurrect. And also, over the course of time, we have learned many lessons. And perhaps. Um, it's time to pull up all those things that were a good idea and work for us um, and shelve all those things that weren't and accumulate all the things that were working and did work for us and focus on all those things rather than um, trying to carry anything from the past into the future. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm noticing in this, so there is the masculine and the feminine, and what I'm noticing in this card for a change, well, I noticed there were four coffins, and I started this reading at, uh, I uh, switched the video on at 14.04, and you know I'm all about the fours, look, there are your four corners of the earth, um, but anyway, what I really noticed is the child in the middle and we've had to do a lot of inner child healing and you know almost by being our own parents our own mother and our own father we we were we are able to heal the divine masculine and the divine feminine aspects kind of archetypal traits the yin and the yang we're trying to harmoniously bring that into cohesion within ourselves and operate from the flow of that yin and yang and um, so we perhaps have done the inner child healing and uh, it's also a reminder to always uh, or never forget your inner child, the playfulness, the fun, the curiosity uh, to, you know, the enthusiasm for life. Don't let those uh, hurdles and challenges you have had to overcome stop you from uh, being excited about life. So um, I really do like this card. You know, who's judging you? Um, we are our own uh, judge, jury, and executioner, as Don Miguel Ruiz tells us in The Four Agreements. And certainly have a look at my videos. Um, I did cover that series last year um, about the, uh, like I said, The Four Agreements. So uh, in the current position, it's about perhaps don't judge yourself too harshly 
and uh, certainly I've heard a few people uh, coming out of long-term marriages, divorces, relationships, even jobs um, that they've done for a long time and they are saying, oh gosh, that was such a waste of my time. You know, I can't believe I spent uh, 10, 12, 17, 20 years uh, on that uh, expenditure of energy and well, I don't have much to show for it. Perhaps not in the external, but certainly on the internal, you have gained so much. You have uh, learned about your awesome and you have taken cognizance of your flawsome and, and learned how to be the alchemist and magic the blend of both of those. So kind of give yourselves a break is I think where I'm going today with this. There is also, I know Aries is in play for something today is in Uranus. And so perhaps we can be feeling a little triggered um, and a little antsy and, a, you know, I'm asking you to mind your anger, don't flare up. Be aware of the tendency perhaps to feel triggered and uh, fiery and wanting to challenge people. And I think the outcome card um, talks a little bit about that, you know, don't uh, judge yourself too harshly. Um, you know, uh, there are a lot of swords we bear and uh, many people are going through a dark night of the soul. If you did not do the work, if you were not proactive in making the necessary changes in your life, eliminating toxic habits, people, places, spaces, activities, then perhaps this is where one can be finding oneself now. Um, a little bit of a war zone for some. Um, and two things come up with the roses. Um, it's a little bit like, <clears throat> excuse me, the checkerboard shows me that um, it's life is a game of chess and checkers. And yes, we need to be operating from our heart and our feels. And that's why sometimes it can feel really heavy and cut really deep. And uh, it does cut both ways always. So we are never... Uh, singularly affected the ripple effect everyone around us is affected and sometimes that can bounce back to bite us so that's why uh, being taking or having an awareness and a focus and intent of operating from love really does ser serve us comically but sorry so the message in the roses two messages is that every rose has a thorn and then uh, perhaps uh, in maybe the bleakness of this card, um, you see again sword, so very mental energy. Don't get too stuck in your head. Um, move into your heart. Um, ask your gut what it uh, feels, what you need to do, what you should do. Um, and be kind and loving to yourself. Um, as in take actions that are loving first to you and through that, loving and kind and compassionate to others um so um the did i say the second message is a little a bit of hope is that everything is coming up roses spoiler alert it's we keep hearing about success so um if you can just focus on the minute and perhaps the silver lining of um the cloud uh, that um the rose bush that you are busy slashing your way through. <laughs> it's like Rapunzel is calling and has let down her hair and you can see her or hear her voice calling. You can't even see her yet. Um, perhaps you can see her brushing her golden hair as it glints in the sunlight and you are hacking your way through the rose, the brambles. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, But we do have... Um, a good outcome to look forward to certainly when we become less judgmental and adopt an attitude of gratitude and adjust our thinking perhaps that's the biggest shift we need to do here is adjust our thinking what I really love which is absolutely move out of your uh, thinking space your mind space your mental space and I think it's about the emotional space uh, stop putting swords into your heart and emotional space and start making daisy chains. So this is the love suit. So it came up doubly in our reading today. Um, the first card 
um, is number 13, which refers to exercising power. So you are learning, again, an alchemist has to experiment. You have to do a lot of lab experiments before you to learn how to turn lead into gold. And that's what we've been doing. But we will, you will succeed. It's inevitable if you keep trying, if you don't give up. <clears throat> Determination, tenacity, faith, hope, love, those are the things that... Uh, are your driving forces so 13 exercising power you have recognized your ability to influence and change your life the alchemist you contemplate how to exercise personal power for the good of all you become one with the universal will and no longer see yourself in isolation <clears throat> you understand your role in the greater community and perhaps uh, individually we are part of a collective so as we individually are going through our evolution and our um, transformations and uh, uh, personal evolution uh, we see that we are not alone. We are part of a community and a collective. So uh, perhaps where you had thoughts or ideas that you were unable to execute because you felt um, in your solitary capacity, in your independent capacity, it was not viable or possible. Um, we are interdependent beings with each other, with the universe, and we need to interdepend upon one another um, as independent entities. So, uh, harmony, I'll read to you the love suit. The love suit represents essential connections and bonding with another, family, friends, associates, and the greater community. Who or what you are called to love is often a mirror for what you need to develop in your own life. When asking questions concerning love with another, read the meaning in relationship with yourself. Um, and I'd love to read the the message on both these cards uh, because the one is Khalil Gibran and I'm actually going to end off reading to you from the prophet uh, which is written by Khalil Gibran on love so um, it might re repeat but it doesn't seem to from a quick glance I read fast I'm sharp, sharp. for a stoner and a second or love one another but make not a bond of love let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your soul. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, so that uh, harmoniously, <laughs> harmony, harmoniously matches with what I was saying about that sense of community. Perhaps we need to be focusing a little more on community. Com, unity, and it takes communication to have com, unity. Sing and dance together and be joyous. So there's the childlike spirit. But let each one of you be alone. I think I repeated that, perhaps out of necessity. We needed to hear it again in stereo. Let the message sink in, get it, integrate it. Even as the strings of a lute are alone, but they quiver with the same music, which reminds me of the word universe, uni being one, verse being song, and we are all um, uh, instruments as part of a large orchestra playing a universal song together. So your individual um, playing does matter. You are um, one thread in the greater weave. So you do matter and who you are and what you do and how you are and how you're being and becoming and doing is very relevant and very important. Not only um, epitome, you know, the epitome for you, but it affects the rest of us. So thank you to those of you who uh, are doing the work of being more loving to the self, more caring, more compassionate, and through that able to extend that uh, naturally to others because it is a natural byproduct when you are loving and kind and compassionate and honor and respect yourself and stop abandoning and reject, uh, rejecting yourself um, as we had from our childhood 
traumas we have healed that like i said from uh, our inner parental perspective perhaps some of us have even managed to heal relationships with our parents and or children and or family members so that's really lovely so the next card that we have also love suit is number 10 and 10 is about transformation evolution you are starting and uh yeah you are starting to experiment with the changes you have made in your life consciously making choices to shape your life you see life people and situations with new eyes you change the way you respond to situations and allow new possibilities to emerge see again emerging You are willingly stretching yourself to ensure personal growth and witness a magical transformation. So isn't that lovely? Um, and the word on the card is artistry and the message is from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. And I love both those numbers, uh, 4 and 8. And 10, uh, like I said to you, uh, in, um, here it means transformation. In the tarot, it's like 10 out of 10. It's like volume 10, you've reached, but it's pre-court card, so it's pre-higher consciousness. So kind of on an ego, let's say basic, if you, it's like finishing high school and you have yet to go to university and do your tertiary education. So we are there, we've finished our secondary education and we are moving into our uh, tertiary education aspect of life, the MBA. Well. For some people, you be university, and some others it will be different levels of. Some people have been at university and are on the MBA already. Some people are only going into uh, first year. So the card reads: Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got such a frog in my throat today. Let's move on swiftly to uh, the, ever, the Crystal Alley card. It's a storm, and storm again is about... Uh, swift sudden changes, tower moments, it's when lightning hits our lives, um, thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening. Um, perhaps, perhaps even it's us. In that um, moment of epiphany, we realize all the drastic changes we need to make and we suddenly feel uh, the calling in order to reach perfect harmony within ourselves, we feel that calling. <laughs> we feel the, you know, the need to follow the uh, Pied Piper, perhaps, and again to become a part, a, a functional instrument in the part of that universal song. Um, so gorgeous synchronizations going on there, and uh, you know, I did the near course last year. I highly recommend anyone interested in learning. Um, sensationary art of movement and enjoying being in one's body and uh, moving to music. Uh, Nia is a beautiful uh, form of movement, a lot of fun. And one of the things I learned in Nia was they do the five stages. I won't go into too much, but you start off in the fetus position and then you move off into your natural, when you were born, learning the stages before learning to walk. So um, you crawled, uh, you know, you started lifting yourself up and you crawled and then you, you started going up on your haunches and then you started walking. And well, we are now kind of uh, being through that lower part, like I said, up to number 10, and we are ready to move into a higher consciousness. But let's hear what uh, Herodite tells us. It's on page 247, 13, which is 4 numerology which uh, again is lovely confirmation there and for again uh, always i'll reinforce the basics um so we will hear them over and over again but perhaps we 
they will become like concrete so we won't have to think about it anymore we'll just operate automatically knowing we need to um, ensure our own personal safety and security and our own foundations we can't hook on to someone else like we'll see in the Khalil uh, as the Khalil Gibran's uh, message on love tells us um, fill each other's cup but drink not from one cup um, let each of you be alone even the, as the strings of the lute are alone in this image humanity progresses from being unaware and closed to an opening towards spirit finally resulting in the evolution of humanity into human light beings so we are starting on that evolution this is the energy of herodite herodite's unique energy embodies the essence of the power of thought and look at that uh, two of our three uh, right away cards were swords which talks about exactly that the mind and thought Herodite is a relatively rare mineral whose, frequently, whose frequency activates the latent areas of the brain, initiating its more esoteric abilities, including psychic powers. And that brings to mind, if you look uh, on YouTube, three years ago when I started doing tarot cards for myself, um, a long time before I started doing them publicly and more, as comfortably as this, on this platform, um, allowing this amount of exposure, um, I, there weren't very many readers. It was very hard to find information and probably only like three or four or five main sites. Now, there are like hundreds. In fact, there are websites that have hundreds of um, psychic read, read, readers, mediums, tarot card readers, astrologers. So it's just so kind of, um, it's the zeitgeist. And these are all tools to help us see beyond our limitations of humanness our as we know by uh, through biology our senses are very limited we don't hear everything we don't see everything so it certainly uh, points to the fact that how can we possibly know everything um anyway uh, enhanced memory and other mental gymnastics these powers are expressions of the divine within us so the akashic us tapping into the akashic records when we are in flow um, or in source when we are low when we are aligned with the universe and employ these powers of the mind we are activating the new phase of our own human evolution Herodite has a frequency that triggers the areas of our brain that have been latent since our descendants in the Atlean times since that time we have completed a great task which included the exploration of the concept of separation Sorry, I just want to go back quickly to that Antlea times, Antlean times. So Atlantis, um, we've heard about uh, the mystery of Atlantis or the legend of Atlantis. And if you go and have a look again, um, Google on your whatever uh, research me uh, forums you use, use those and you'll find even on YouTube many more discovery programs, a lot more information about Atlantis. And there's more and more information to point to effect or to point to it being actually a really... Um, conscious uh, higher um, consciousness civilization uh, gazillions of moons ago um, it did exist and uh, perhaps humanity had the fall of the Sodom and Gomorrah and perhaps we are rising back into that higher state of mind you know uh, the alien you know what we attribute to aliens the being able to levitate uh, defy gravity uh, travel through um, faster than or at the speeds of light uh, and sound uh, move through solid objects so I think that's kind of uh, relevant it's kind of don't dismiss that yes there's a lot of fiction but I believe in everything there is always a morsel or a nickel of truth so perhaps <laughs> nickel Nikki B um, uh, it's an alloy by the way uh, which means it binds and I think that was going to come up now about that separation and I did talk about it the, here about the Heroes Gamos the cross is actually about us coming into perfect alignment within ourselves where all our chakras balanced and we're operating through our heart chakra which is love, pure love, unconditional love 
for ourselves, for others. And that's very a key message. I keep hearing it and I keep speaking about it. It keeps coming up. So <clears throat> we've got to do a lot of work on love at the moment, people, really. Uh, you look at your hearts, feed them, feed them all the nourishment they need. Ask from yourself, commit a commitment to loving yourself more and um, uh, honoring yourself more and respecting yourself more and really step up for yourself, not for anybody else. Uh, love, go. Uh, oh, and if you look at the word evolve backwards, L. O V E. Just saying. Um, where was that about separation? We are now completing the cycle of learning, like I said, secondary to uh, education done, and we are returning to the level of mental and spiritual abilities, which are our higher chakras. So anything above the heart, throat, third eye, crown. Um, to, uh, before. We are uh, let, returning to the level of mental and spiritual ability we command, commanded before the descent to Sodom and Gomorrah within ourselves. We had to have bad habits and have toxic relationships and codependencies on things that didn't serve us in order to learn what doesn't work because it's very hard to know what does work unless we've experimented with things that don't. So the, the image that's coming to mind, it's a bit like that kissing frogs, you know, if you were going out on the dating scene um, and, you know, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you uh, find a prince. And perhaps uh, if you're kissing frogs and not finding princes, you are tackling things from the wrong perspective or angle and having an attitude of gratitude for what you have right here, right now. And I promise you, there's a lot, starting with your physical human being, what it can do, its functionality, um, its mental capacities, its consciousness capacities, and then extend that to beyond yourself, uh, to, for the, you know, whatever you're able to do, the expression of your human, what it allows you to do, be thankful for that. And then uh, the resources and tools you have in your life that enable you to uh, be functional, and uh, holy you, uh, those are all blessings. Start there. You'll find there a lot. That will help you rise up the Jacob's Ladder. This evolution of humanity is the completion of a great cycle of growth and learning. And we did, oh, I get goosebumps right now, truth chills, uh, about we had that conjunction uh, the star of Bethlehem in December, the conjunction in uh, north degrees of Aquarius, of Jupiter and Saturn. And it was very much about the, moving into the age of Aquarius, which is a mental sign. It is a sword. It's ruled by swords. Um, so it's, uh, understanding its motto is, I know. Herodite has appeared at this time to aid us in initiating this evolution of the body, mind, and spirit. So it is time to bring those that those three into a union, a harmonious harmony, harmonious harmony. Oh my gosh, harmony is something you have in music. So there's definitely a lot to do with rhythm and becoming a part of the greater orchestra, understanding what who you are as an instrument and what notes you have to play. Is there a conductor? that we need to be following, perhaps? <clears throat> Where is the conducting coming from? A lot of questions. Are oh, there answers? Yes, they are. They are inside you. If you go quiet and go within that pause of breath, in uh, the internal respiration, that is where the answers lie and all the problems you are seeking to solve have already been solved. Moving on. Herod has appeared at this time to aid us in initiating this evolution of the body, mind, and spirit. Herod's frequency, frequency not only stimulates and initiates the brain, but it acts to stimulate the pre-encoded genetic triggers that will initiate, initiate us into this new phase of existence. So I'm trying to speak fast and I'm stumbling over my, stumbling over my words. So I'm just going to slow it down, which is, I also think, a guiding message for us in this times. You know, perhaps we've done a lot of chasing in lives for things that haven't served us. 
And it's a time to sit back and let the answers find us in a way instead of us chasing the answers. They are there. Pause. Take a moment. You know, um, perhaps some time to meditate. Uh, and just be whole and centered would serve us well in finding answers and figuring out how to move forward or and certainly uh, find peace and love in our hearts. You have to go within to get through. The only way through is in. Here that speaks of evolution in our bodies, our relationships and our creations. By opening ourselves to its vibration, we accept our responsibility to allow deep transformation and emergence into our birthright as human-like beings. Evolution is defined in the Random House Collegiate Dictionary as a motion incomplete in itself, but combining with coordinated motions to produce a single action. We are all of us producing single motions every day through the choices we make, the actions we take, and the thoughts that we have. When we combine these single motions, or those single motions, we create a single action. Each of our experiences and paths, when taken together, create the evolution of humanity, the universe, the one song. Heredite is a unifying force in this action, linking our minds, hearts, and energies to produce a single action, our human evolution. So when you are evolving uh, as an expression, well, through your expression, um, as a soul spirit being here, uh, you automatically, uh, the ripple effect, you automatically enhance the overall effect. <coughs> the message, when Herodite appears as your ally, you're being asked to acknowledge your part in the total evolution of humanity at this time in history. Your choices and actions are like a drop in a pool its ripples affecting everything else around it. You are not, you do not operate in isolation. Everything you do uh, affects somebody somewhere, somehow. Are your current motions, your thoughts and actions, moving you towards a higher state of evolution? Or are they ripples of past always being that, always or are there ripples of past ways of being that need to be reformed or removed before you can experience your life on heaven, on a higher level? I don't know why I can't connect those two. I think I was a bit resist. I put this off till quite late. Normally I do this early. I was feeling a bit lazy today. Manana kind of a day. Manana being Spanish for tomorrow. Um, so... Um, yeah, I'm feeling, so I think that's how I'm struggling to be really present. Maybe that's a message in that. Uh, before you undertake anything, always make sure you're completely present here and now. So let me quickly do that. Thank you. As with any Storm Element card, Herodite heralds a time of great change. Heralds a time. When Herodite appears, it is telling you that this particular time of change is greatly directed by the thoughts and actions that you take. You know in your heart the direction spirit is asking you to move in. Sometimes we need to be brave and courageous. The unknown can be scary. If you accept spirit's guidance, your actions will cause ripples in the entire fabric of humanity, moving the spiritual evolution of us all forward a step. It works on the seven, so your highest, and etheric, so um, your like personal space, uh, auric layer. And the affirmation is, I allow my physical self to align with my higher self now. I align with my physical self. I allow my physical self to align with my higher self now. And so that's where we, that, the, my discord today is kind of showing, I think, a visual 
um, example of how things work when we don't um, align ourselves. Normally the readings just flow and I don't really stumble over my words so much. But as we see today, I have uh, cotton wool in my mouth and my throat coughing. So um, there was also something else about... I like, oh, um, so last year I, my spirit guidance message was to lighten up. And not necessarily in my attitude, uh, I needed to do that, but uh, that I realized uh, only came later now. I'm appreciating that that needed to happen and it has. But really it was about lightening up the being uh, of the body. So really becoming aware of how I was eating, what I was eating. Um, and I know that for me and uh, we all follow our own conscience. So everybody please do. <laughs> Uh, you are your own judge and jury, you do what you see fit, uh, but I certainly know my spirit said to me to st uh, stop and uh, minimize my consumption of any um, red meat, certainly warm-blooded animals, mammals, anything that would be very similar to me, because uh, for me the message was, who am I to play God between deciding, um, you know, well, to differentiate between if I was eating a warm-blooded mammal, what is the difference between a four-legged or a two-legged? You know, I could be eating you <laughs> in uh, flesh, not in other ways um, for the predator types. Um, but, uh, and it was also to really hydrate well, to cleanse my body, purge. And I noticed I've been through a four-week, my body... Uh, I picked up an E. coli when I was supping, so I have had uh, gut issues that I've been Nikki B. wellnessing <laughs> the fuck out of for the last four weeks. I've been a lot of discomfort. I haven't felt very well, just as in my energy levels have been low. I've had a lot of discomfort. I've been able to sleep well. But I'm happy to tell you that last night I actually had my first night of sleep with no cramping. So I am very grateful, and it was worth... Uh, sticking to my guns because there were days where I just uh, woke up crying in so much discomfort thinking you know if I could just go to a doctor and uh, they could give me something or somebody could just sort this out or could someone just come along and care for me and make it all go away but I had to do the work I had to do the purging um, I had to try different things and um, hack and stack and go through the physical discomfort but you know, what I'm grateful for is my attitude all along was very good in that uh, I was consistently aware that this was a really deep cellular purge of old programming and patterning from my past, uh, certainly from an energetic level. So physically I've done it, uh, my mind to, um, you know, I was able to ride. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest physical diseases or ailments I've gone through in a very, very long time. Um, you know, I'm uh, perimenopausal, so I had about 20 days of bleeding stacked on top of that. So all in all, it, it's been quite a intense um, time for me, and I'm just so grateful to have had this and um, all the things around me that uh, have kept my spirit, spirit buoyant and my soul committed to uh, me and my cause and my healing in order to radiate uh, better so for you in whichever ways I bring you my services and products and my knowledge and my skill base. So uh, I'm so grateful for the journey. <clears throat> I'm grateful it's over and I'm grateful for the lessons learned. And uh, this is getting quite long now, so let me finish off from... Uh, it has to do because both the destiny cards were about love and uh, the quote on the one card was from Khalil Gibran so I pulled it out and let's have a look and he answered it's on page 10 by the way people of Orphalese of what can I speak save of that which is even now moving within your souls then Almitra then said Almitra Speak to us of love. So I will speak to you of love because that is my mission to share and uh, teach love. I've been on a very hardcore journey to learn that. And so um, through my own mastery, uh, I am able to perhaps 
offer assistance. And not only that, uh, you are my teacher as much as I am your teacher. So I'm always a willing student, happy to learn. And he raised his head and looked upon the people, and there fell a stillness upon them. And with a great voice he said, When love beckons to you, follow him. Though his ways are hard and steep, and when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you. And when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. And that makes me think of the rose. A symbology analogy. Even as he ascends to your highest and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them, shake them in their clinging to the earth. Like sheaves of corn he gathers you unto himself. He threshes you to make you naked. He sifts you free from your husks. He grinds you to whiteness. He needs you until you are pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. So that's a lovely, uh, again, it shows that we are just a part of the whole. So you are just uh, a, an, um, not an ingredient, you are a food, um, oh gosh, you're one of the offerings on the feast a table of life <clears throat> all these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart but if in your fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless, seasonless world where you shall laugh but not all of your laughter and weep but not all of your tears. Love give, gives naught but itself and takes naught but itself. Love possesses not nor would it be possessed for love is sufficient unto love. When you love you should say, not say God is in my heart, but rather I am in the heart of God. And think not that you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must needs have desires, let these be your desires. To melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody into the night. There's more reference to music. To know the pain of too much tenderness. To be wounded by your own understanding of love. And to bleed willingly and joyfully. To awaken at dawn with a winged heart and to give thanks for another day of loving. To rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy. To return home at eventide with gratitude. And then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and a song of praise upon your lips. Namaste. In the cash. Blessings.